Today, you are listening to Think Again Christian, where pop culture and Christian traditions collide with biblical truth. Sponsored by Rainier Christian Schools. And now your host, pastor of Ravensdale Bible Church and superintendent of Rainier Christian Schools, Tony Jamie. Rethinking, re-examining concepts, ideas, traditions, beliefs, both spiritual and cultural. Uh, that's what we've come to do, and so many times we have come to accept uh, our ideas as fact or even as given truths, and, and yet they're not. And so we want to make sure that we, we think again and, and we process this. As believers, you know, we hold to a lot of denominational traditions, or maybe they're passed down from our parents or uh, way back when in childhood at Sunday School Concepts, and, and, and yet we live in America where there's a lot of different Uh, ideologies, a lot of different views, social, philosophical, political, and and all this comes colliding together. And then you throw in just common pop culture in the TV, music, movies, and and, and postmodernism that's just, uh, you know, all around us. And so the world's views surround us, and and whether we want to admit it or not, uh, there is a battle for thought. And, and we must win that battle, and we must win that battle with, with biblical think, thinking. So, so today's show addresses one of the most dangerous, that's right, most dangerous misconceptions that faces Christianity today. And, and it's the concept that Jesus is, is nothing more than, than a spiritual Santa Claus. Uh, well, what do I mean by that? Well. Christianity is is being painted as as you know you, you can do whatever you want you can commit any sin any load of sin and and, and Jesus can forgive it and, and most definitely let me be clear that is absolutely true I mean there is you know no amount of sin no amount of years of sin that that somebody can commit and and, and it's not too much for Jesus his blood can cover all that sin but but the idea then that that you can just continue in that and that there's really no change, no transformation, no repentance. Well, well, that's just a lie from the pit of hell. And that's just, you know, Santa Claus Christianity where, you know, Santa's always happy and you sit on his lap and, you know, he's going to give you free gifts and whatever you want. And Santa doesn't have any obligations or requirements. And, you know, he pats you on the back and you'll see him next year. Well, the reality is that, you know, sin angers Jesus. Uh, sin is, is, is outrageous. And, and there is a price. It, it's not free. It, it's free to you and me, but it wasn't free. Um, Jesus paid that with his sacrifice, with, with, with his blood, and, and we need to honor that. And then, again, Satan or Santa, um, Freudian slip there, <laughs> Santa requires no obligation, whereas there is an obligation in Christianity. Uh, the scriptures are, are not silent in, in our obedience. Uh, from page one to, to the end, there, there is a, a reaction by believers to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. And, and so let me, let me just take a quick little time out here and, and just, just think through this again, because I want to make sure that that, that you're not misunderstanding me. Let, me. let me be clear. Salvation is an absolutely free gift. There is no work. There's no uh, amount of obedience that is, is going to get you into heaven that's going to outweigh uh, your goodness versus your, your sin. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 is very clear. This, this is a free gift through faith, not of your own. Your, your faith isn't even merited as, as, as a payment. This is a free gift from God. What we're really talking about then is post-salvation, post-salvation obedience. And so when you look at something even like Deuteronomy 6 and, and the great Shema that, that tells us, be careful to obey all that is written in the commandments, the statutes, the precepts, the, the, the law of the Lord. Or, or Romans 6, which calls us and commends us to be no longer slaves of unrighteousness, but actually we're, we're still slaves. We're just now slaves of obedience and, and we're willful slaves. We're, we're bond servants. The idea of, of the indentured servant who, who willfully is, is 
making that sacrifice of slavery to our Lord and Savior. And then I think of James one twenty five that tells us that we're not supposed to be just forgetful hearers. We we listen to radio programs, we we go to church, or maybe listen to podcasts and hear amazing sermons and messages, and we're reminded, and then we walk away and immediately forget and don't apply to live. We need to be not only doers, but as the scriptures say, effectual doers, effectual doers. A clear point of emphasis there. And then finally, I, I, I think of one of my favorite passages, which is Matthew sixteen twenty four, which Jesus says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. If we don't understand that, that there needs to be a, a change of lifestyle because of what Jesus did on the cross, then we really don't understand Christianity. And, and we really just think that Jesus is uh, nothing more than Santa Claus. And so I, I, I want to read for you or, or just kind of go over um, the, the story that I read of it. several years ago. I was in the William Bennett's uh, you know, Book of Virtues, and it was by M.F. Uh, Cowdery. It was called Nails in the Post. And I remember reading this years ago and have used this several times as a, examples in church, but, but it really uh, made an impact on me. And, and I think this is at the heart of my concern and, and really clearly illustrates what I'm talking about. And so the story goes that there was once a farmer who, who had a son named John, a, a boy very apt to be thoughtless and careless about what he was doing and what he was told. I mean, that sounds like, you know, your typical adolescent, right? And one day his father said to him, John, you are so careless and forgetful that every time you do wrong, I'm going to drive a nail in that post to remind you how often you've been naughty. I mean, because certainly, you know, children and even our, even us, I mean, we tend to think, oh, I'm not that bad. And, and yet if we were to, you know, make marks, we would be shocked to find out how many violations we have. John's father also said, and every time you do right, I'm going to take one of those nails out. Well, his his father did as he said he would do. And every day he had one and sometimes a great many nails that, that were driven in. But very seldom did he draw one out. And so his sin really was outweighing the, the good things that he thought he was doing. Now, at last, John saw that the post was quite covered with nails and, and he began to, to be ashamed of having so many faults. And so he resolved in his heart to to be a better boy. And the next day he was so good and industrious that several nails came out. And the day after the same thing and, and so on for a long time until one day there was only one nail that remained. Now his father then called him and said, look, John, here is the very last nail and now I'm going to draw it out. Are you not glad? Well, John sobbed and said, yes, the nails are gone, but the scars, the scars are still there. And so it is with your sin, your faults, your bad habits, that, that, that you may overcome them. And, 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 and the cross, the blood of Jesus may, may cover them and atone for those sins. But my concern now is the scars that are left behind. And see, the problem in today's society is we, we, we tend to give very little credence to, to the ramifications of the sin. I, I spent a couple years with Seattle's Union Gospel Mission, and, 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 and it's a heartbreaking um, ministry because you go in underpasses and, and you meet people who are, who are hungry, who are um, you know, without food, shelter, friendships, and definitely the Lord, and, and they're in desperate, desperate trouble. The problem is, is that the, the consequences for, for their disobedience are, are so, you know, heavy. And there's so many that it's very, very difficult for them to make a change. Even if they wanted to, to then go get a job and go to work, or they don't present well, they're, they're missing teeth, they're, they have that, that kind of that look that is a perpetual high, or they don't have clean clothes, or they smell, and they have been out of work for five or six years, and, and so they're not, they're not skilled. And so we see then that while, while we can bring them in and, and while they can be saved from their sin, they're, they're still going to be scars. And with them, physically scars that, that you can see and 
one of the amazing secret ministries at, at Seattle's Union Gospel Mission is they have a whole dental clinic where you can go in and from top to bottom, uh, they, they use UW students and volunteers and, and they have an amazing dental um, service that they give there for, for absolutely free. Well, we do see biblical concepts for this, this idea that, you know, there are going to be consequences for disobedience. There's going to be consequences for disobedience. Even though there may be uh, a big picture forgiveness of sin, there's going to be consequences. And just recently I was, uh, you know, preaching at, uh, at the church that I, that I serve in, which is a uh, Ravensdale Bible church out there in the little town of Ravensdale an offshoot of Maple Valley in uh second Samuel 12, uh, uh, chapter 12, and, and we're, we're going over the life of David. And what we see in the life of David is, is David commits this heinous adultery with Bathsheba. His, his adultery is compounded um, by the covering then of his sin, and, and he does that by having Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, sent to the front lines to have a, quote-unquote, accidental death. Uh, th- this is this is murder, and, and David, in his his sin and his covering for sin, takes this action, and and David's sin is creating now a, a, a trickle down effect of of major scars, and so when we look at this passage, we we see four ramifications that um, that David is going to be left with. We're we're going to see that uh, you know in, in chapter 12, verse 10, that the sword is not going to depart uh, from his house. There, there's going to be violence. There's going to be attack. There's going to be opposition within his own house. Uh, there's also uh, uh, the curse that the, there's going to be evil that rises up from his own house. And we see that in his own son, Absalom, who's going to rise up and try to overthrow David. We also see the punishment of of David's wives. Now, you know, this is not a you know, we're not addressing polygamy here, but J- David's wives were were taken away from him and and given to to rivals, and and he was mocked through that. And then finally, we see David's son that that Bathsheba had through the the adulterous relationship was going to be taken away and die. And so we see that within David, King David, uh, where where the Davidic covenant runs, where where the Messiah is going to run through his line, even King David is going to have scars because of his sin, and yet we know that David, in the long run, is considered righteous. Uh, read the Psalms; it's repeated over and over again. And so, when we come back, we'll talk more about this concept of nails in the post and the marks and the scars that it causes. Since their small beginnings in 1963, the ministry of Rainier Christian Schools has been dedicated to educating and developing each of their students for the glory of God. And it's more than just a school. Rainier Christian Schools is actually an entire school district, with three schools serving the areas of Kent, Auburn, Covington, Renton, and Maple Valley. The Christ-centered environment weaves God's truth through everything they do, from top-notch academics all the way through their competitive sports programs. Learn more at RainierCSD.org or call 425-255-7273. That's 425-255-7273. Contact Rainier Christian Schools today. Welcome back. You're listening to Think Again Christian, sponsored by Rainier Christian Schools. And now your host, Tony Jamie. Nails in the Post, uh, a great note that was written uh, many years ago by Mr. Caudry, and we see the concept then of even though we can take the nails out of the post, uh, there may be scars that remain that uh, are ugly and long-lasting. Well, why does this concern me so much, and why is there such a concern? Well, I was thinking about this, and in, in, in very, uh, you know, one, one clear example I see is at Rainier Christian Schools. So we deal with this concept every single day with our students. Um, pop culture parades its naughty behavior as though it's a big game. Your, your, your typical Disney, you know, channel show 
uh, you know, they, they have a problem, right? And the, the kids are, are running amok and really just parenting themselves. And, you know, uh, the parents are around, but they're just a, a, a joke and, and they're for humor. But when conflicts arise in these, in these shows, and I think of, you know, that show, Hannah Montana, that this would happen every episode, that in about two minutes at the end, all the lies, all the hijinks and, and whatever seems to be a never ending cycle of, of, you know, of, of deception and, 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 and corruption just ends and is magically cured. Uh, and there's just amazing cycle of forgiveness The the brothers, the sisters, the friends, the parents, everybody just, you know, in, in, in the, in the snap, uh, all is forgiven. Does it really work that way? Does it really work that when you lie and cheat and sneak around behind your parents back, that you're going to have an amazing trusting relationship? See, that's just not real life. And the problem is, and what we try to convey to our students is that, you know, um, when you drink and drive, people do die. They, they really die. It's, it's not TV. That when there's, you know, things like uh, teen sex and, and this creates teen babies, um, this creates a, a long lasting effect that um, lasts forever. I mean, that, that's, that's, and, and again, the, these children that, that come from these relationships are, are amazing blessings and, and we love them, but, but, but it's a hard life to lead now. Uh, drugs, drugs aren't cool. Drugs are not cool. Uh, go down to the mission and, and see what happens to people who, who do drugs. Uh, lying to parents, lying to parents is not funny. It, it's, it's one of the worst sins that when, when you think about from a, from a parent to a child, uh, violations that can be because that just uh, eliminates all confidence, all trust, faith. Uh, it, it, it's it's a, a big problem. It's not funny at all. And then one of the issues that has come down, you know, over the last few years is this idea that, you know, that being a bad student or, or acting dumb is is okay. And it's actually, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's part of the, the, the new culture. Um, it is a very, very destructive habit because what happens is they start this around middle school and they develop these bad habits of not caring about school, not caring about learning, not learning how to read, not learning how to study, and really not having any kind of motivation or drive uh, to be a learner in life. And the reality is, is I don't care what you do in life, you you need to be a learner. We're, we're all learners. As I look around me, I... I, you know, I see the, the engineering studio and, and, you know, a board with all kinds of lights and gizmos. And I have no idea what those lights do. Somebody needs to operate those the right way. And, and while they may have studied a little bit in school about them, they really learn as they're on the job even more in their apprenticeship. And they read journals and magazines and they get better and better. And all of a sudden, you know, new equipment comes in and they got to keep learning and keep growing. And, it goes on and on and on. We need to be learners in life. And so this idea then that, you know, I can give away five, eight years, three years, even one year of life, and, and, and there won't be any mark. There won't be any scars is, is just untrue. But see, the, the kids think they can do whatever they want. And then here's the cool thing then Santa Claus Jesus is going to wipe away everything and forgive them all their sins and make everything better. The problem is, is you can't go back to eighth grade now because you're 23 years old and you had an opportunity to learn algebra or geometry and, and, and now you can't go back. And so you're behind. So my prayer then becomes that, that our students, that they, they, they think again before they start dabbling in, destructive behaviors or out and out blatant sin. See, the problem with sin is that there is going to be a consequence. There, there will be. Now, it, there's different levels of consequences, not different levels of sin. All, all sin is sin, but different levels of consequences. And there may not be hell or teen pregnancy or an STD, but there but worst case scenario, you know, one, one of the, the great effects that, that I've seen uh, over the last five years is, is this idea of, of purity and, and how, you know, purity actually lasts a lifetime. Uh, what do I mean by that? You know, this crazy new invention called Facebook came out, right? And I remember when I 
first got on there, me and my wife, you know, went on there and it was really neat because within seconds, I mean, people that you hadn't had contact with for a long time are popping up and, you know, saying things. And, you know, I have my, my whole, you know, I, I call them my BC friends, right? Before Christ and, and where I grew up and the town I grew up in. And I hadn't seen people for 30 years and I'm, I love these guys, you know, but I was 10, 11, 12 years old and they had been searching for me. And that was really cool to see. But, you know, these are non-believers. These are, these are guys that are, are, are rough around the edges and the things that they were saying, um, you know, I had to cover my, my wife's eyes a couple times. The other thing that started to happen were, were girls that would respond. And it was at that moment that I was so thankful that there was nothing that somebody could say on that Facebook that was, was going to damage the relationship that I had with my wife. And, you know, you could only imagine the things that people uh, might be able to say if there was some kind of impure relationship in the past. And, and, and I just realized, wow, purity lasts a lifetime. As a, a pastor, one of the ministries that I had was a young married Bible study for three and a half years. And, and, and you know, most of the, the kids that were getting married, I call them kids because they were under 24 most of the time. And um, one of the biggest issues that we had to deal with was this this issue of impurity and and the different relationships that one or both of the this these new couples had and and it was making a dramatic impact on their marriage today. Something that happened three four years ago was affecting them today. And so, even though the forgiveness of sin can atone um, for the entrance into heaven, that that doesn't mean uh, that guilt or scars aren't left behind. And so again, we, we see this, uh, we see this at, 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 at school all the time, just in the, in the aspect of, of so many families who are, who are going through divorces. And so we see the, the, the ramification of, of scars and, and all kinds of different um, results from that and uh, in, in those relationships. And it's painful. It's painful to see the, the students go through this issue. It's painful to see the parents go through this, this issues. And even though we can see just some uh, amazing stories of, of restoration and, and how the Lord, you know, brings two different families together and, and they have an amazing and dynamic impact for Christ, uh, all too often it, it, it's filled more with scars and tragedy. And so, as we look at this, um, I, I was remember, re, re, reminded myself of, of just communion. And, and one of the things we do in communion is we, we, we examine ourselves. You know, I always, I always mention to people at church, okay, this isn't the time where you sit there and you look down and you look at your wife or your husband or you look at your children and, and you, you, know, you start examining them for communion, right? No, this, this is about you, you and the Lord and where you stand in the Lord. And, and, and I try to, to, to get our congregation to personalize this because it is personal. Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, right? And so when you're getting ready to partake in communion and you're examining your, your, your life and you realize the sin of Tony Jamie alone put Jesus Christ on the cross, my sin alone required the blood of Christ. What a humbling thing to think, but, but what, a, what a truth and what a reality. And so as, as we look at sin, we want to make sure that, that, that we're cognizant of the fact that there's, there's going to be scars that, that leave a mark like the nails in the post. Um, and, and you want to be able to move on and move forward and, and be born again and a new creature in Christ. Um, but it's not easy, and I know. And so, so take some advice. Um, whenever you find yourself doing wrong or, or getting into a bad habit, stop. Stop at once. It's that idea of repent. Repent means stop, turn around. And go the other way. I think of Brother Joseph, you know, with Potiphar's wife. He, he just runs. You don't know what to do? Run. Just like Forrest Gump. Just, just start running. 
run away from sin, figure it out when you, when you get far away from it. Because you know what happens? Satan says, you know what? It's okay. It's, it's just a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything. And you know what? Santa Jesus is going to keep on forgiving you anyway. Remember, sins can leave scars and some scars. Some scars might create some cool characteristics, but most scars are, are just ugly. Only Christ, only Christ can remove those nails and only you can prevent the sin that leads to those scars. So take sin seriously. 